So about two months ago, we went to Greece and we saw historical sites and monuments and museums and I wanna tell you all about it. The trip really began in Athens. Our first full day in Athens, we walked up to the Athenian Acropolis. This is the site of that very famous temple that you see in like all of the photographs of Athens. It's a long walk up this hill. It's kind of crowded when you get there. There's so many people and it's it's really high up. You can see all around the city from up there. And, and I, I think for all of us, it was when we were up there standing in front of the Parthenon that we realize, like, this is, re we are really here. So I'll tell you, you know, why I went to Greece or how I came to go there. And then I'll talk a little bit more about Athens. And then I'll mention, I think I've got four other, like, highlights of the trip for me that, that I'll get to and share with you. So I went to Greece as part of this travel study course at St. Thomas University. I'm a university professor, if you're just happening upon this channel. My name is Dr. Andrew Moore. I teach great books at St. Thomas University, and we ran this travel study course. Uh, I went with my colleague, Dr. Matt Dynan, and about 30 of our great book students from St. Thomas. And we had this course where we, we spent about 10 days studying on campus. We read Thucydides and Plato and Aristophanes. We, we studied ancient Greek history and, and political theory and philosophy and theater. And then we traveled to Greece for about 12 days. And we, we contracted a tour company. We went with a, a company called Aristotle Tours, who took us around Greece and it was a really great experience. And we saw many amazing things that, that I, some of these things, some of these moments were almost like religious experiences. So I, just, I wanna share them with you. If, maybe if you're thinking about going to Greece, maybe this will be useful. Things, things you want to see or want to see while you're there. Maybe you just wanna live vicariously through me because it was fantastic, I'm not gonna lie. So one of the things on that, that first day, the day we, we visited the Parthenon, visited the Athenian Acropolis, we also saw, this was very meaningful for me, was the, the theater of Dionysus. And this is this is the site, the amphitheater, where where theater, like Greek theater, is invented. Like it was, it was just sort of mind-blowing to be there. Here is this is the place where 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 Sophocles and, and Euripides like staged their plays. One thing I did not know before before going there, my our tour guide told us this. In the theater, around the, the perimeter of the performance space, in the in the front row basically, some of the chairs are they're a bit more like like thrones. They're they're slightly more elaborate chairs than some of the other seats behind them. And we were told these were reserved seats not for like particular people or or for wealthy patrons or anything like that but they were they were reserved for people who held certain political offices and this is it's sort of symbolically important because ancient athens of course was a democracy it's significant then that priority of place at the theater is given you know not not to the most wealthy or necessarily the most powerful but but instead to the citizens who are occupying these these political offices. And this was sort of typical throughout our, our our whole trip is that we saw the various ways that that the political culture of the ancient world was reflected in the monuments, which it was just an extraordinary learning experience that way. That same day, which might still be maybe the most extraordinary moment of the of the whole trip, we visited the the ancient Agora, which was like the, the center of, of ancient Athens, like the marketplace. And this was of course like the the territory, the ground that Socrates would have inhabited. This is like where he he walked and and spoke with people. And archaeologists believe they they have a theory that they've they've located the site of an ancient Athenian prison near the Agora where they believe Socrates was imprisoned and executed. Socrates, if you need a reminder, was a famous Athenian philosopher, and he was famous for kind of causing trouble. He asked lots of questions. He kind of bothered people. In particular, he would sort of embarrass and expose powerful people or influential people, demonstrating that they didn't really know the things they claimed to know. And he was accused of having a bad influence on young Athenian citizens, on corrupting them, and also for for teaching new gods for disrespecting the gods of the city and teaching new gods a new religion and for that he was tried and convicted and executed and so at the the end of our, our first full evening in athens we were standing at the site where socrates died so behind me is the site of socrates's prison this is where socrates was imprisoned and eventually executed this is sort of unreal to me about a year ago in our great books program i was teaching the crito that's the dialogue that's set in this very prison. Socrates' friend Crito tries to convince Socrates to escape prison, but he won't leave because Socrates refuses to break the law. 
It's amazing. This was for for someone like me and and for my students. We read a lot of Plato. We read things like Thucydides. We read Homer. We read a lot of ancient Greek uh, texts in our in our courses. And so it was just really extraordinary to be in these spaces, like to to be on the same you know patch of ground where where Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, where they walked and and studied and lived. The food was also very delicious throughout. It was really good. Lots of delicious meats. I'm a big fan of the gyros, the, the gyros or the heroes. These were delicious. The tzatziki sauce, dear Lord, so good. We just had tzatziki sauce at every meal, all, all the time. Breakfast, there, here's some tzatziki sauce. You can put it on your toast. Like it's all over the place all the time. And it is delicious. We should all be doing this. Greek salad and feta cheese. Like, holy cow. Real, like food was really delicious. Okay, so the, the four other highlights for me, uh, these these are the things that, that have really stayed with me, you know, two months later. First, we went to Corinth, the city of Corinth, and we visited the Corinthian Citadel, fortified building, set of buildings. It's a fortress on, on top, generally on top of a hill. This one was very high up, but you are able to to go, you walk all the way up, all the way to the top of the Citadel. A group of us did that. I would say, if you're going there, wear comfortable shoes. You know, it's a bit of a hike. It's no joke. It's very steep, but the views from up there are spectacular. I I don't know that I've seen anything quite like it. And when you're up there, you immediately recognize the strategic utility of, of the Citadel, like why you're up so high. You can see anything coming from very, very far away. I'll also mention here that we, we traveled in May. So we were there in May and we were told multiple times that this May was maybe the best time of year uh, to come visit Greece. We went in kind of early May, which might've been a, a little too early, but but apparently by the time by the time summer hits in, in Greece, it gets very, very hot and quite dry. They deal with wildfires there in the same way they do in California. Yeah. There's, there's wildfires. And so uh, if you're there in the summer, it's extremely hot. But when we were there in May, the flowers were in full bloom. Everything was green. It was very, very beautiful. One of the other places, and, and pretty well everybody who's who's visited Greece and, and recommends you go here, this is Olympia. So you can go to Olympia. This is the site of the original Olympic Games. This is where they invented the Olympics. And there's many, many monuments, practice fields, and areas where spectators camped out. You can go into the Olympic Stadium and you can run races. When we were there, there were, there were many, many like school children on field trips and they were all running races. <laughs> Our students ran, they did, I don't know if it was 100 meters, might have been can't remember exactly. It was a little longer. Uh, anyway, they ran a race. It was fun. All right. Well, we're in Olympia at the stadium, so they're going to race. On your mark. Get set. Go. So Olympia is really worth seeing. And the museum at Olympia is, is really amazing. It's the museum that has the largest collection of ancient Greek armor in, in all of Greece and all of the world. That's one of the things I think a lot of people want to see. We often read about, about ancient Greek warfare. We were, we were studying the Peloponnesian war, the civil war between Athens and Sparta. And so that was, it was really interesting for us to see the equipment that, that these soldiers were wearing, what they had to carry. The third thing, and I think, so we visited Mycenae. So Mycenae is the, is the, the territory that legend has it was ruled by Agamemnon. So Agamemnon is the leader of the Greek forces during the Trojan War. They have structures there, walls, fortifications, that date back 3,000 years. And so this is just to kind of put this in perspective, right? When we're talking about Socrates, when we're talking about Plato, we're talking about roughly 2,500 years ago. So so the people we call the ancients, this was ancient history to them. And so when, when you are there, you really, I don't know, I just got this sense, like it, it felt like the world that Homer describes, like you could kind of feel it. Like it, it just felt different. We visited another site, which has uh, traditionally been called Nestor's Palace. There was once upon a time, archeologists thought that this was the site of Nestor's Palace. Nestor is another, another one of the Greek heroes from the Trojan War. And there were, there were various artifacts, like there's a bathtub still in this palace. So you can actually see here is a bathtub that dates back 3000 years. And this, maybe this, you know, maybe that's not interesting, but if you if you read things like the Odyssey, there are these moments of bathing and being bathed and being washed that are that are significant in the poem. And you you see like this 
This is that that world. We we were looking at the things that were that were being imagined and represented in these poems that we've read. And I'll close it out with with Delphi. Uh, we we visited Delphi and uh, and saw some of the the temples there. Um, this is of course the, the famous oracle at Delphi, which which shows up in in many of the you know Plato talks about this. This is it was the oracle that said that Socrates was wiser than any other human. This is this the site of the the most famous oracle in in ancient Greek history. And again, when you are there in this space, it's surrounded by like tree covered mountains. It's very high up. When you are there, you do just feel this this kind of connection to to the stories and and the culture that you've been studying you sort of understand why these these spaces were understood to be sacred even though they've become these these very popular tourist destinations and there's lots of people there you you still just all you have to do is look around and it's this palpable sensation that you are you are in this kind of sacred space let me tell you one thing you don't know about greece maybe maybe you do you probably don't know lots of cats cats everywhere just running wild and free and the cat we just saw cats all over the place and this is i don't know maybe this is typical of some places that the cats obviously keep you know vermin and, and pests at bay so the citizens you know just kind of you know treat the cats with respect and there's just these kind of public public cats out <laughs> hanging out all over the place so if you're a cat lover lots of our students were cat lovers and this this was uh, like a bonus for them lots of cats all over the place if you would like to know more if you'd like to hear more about our, our trip as a class to greece uh, i actually made these vlogs over the whole course of our of our travels you can find those on our we have a great books instagram page it's at stew great books on instagram so if you go there you can find out more about our course there's also a link in the description below to St. Thomas, the great books program. If you just want to find out about us and what we do and what we study, you can check that out. So I thought I'd talk about Greece. This is the eighth installment of a, a 10 week series that I'm doing this summer of, of various, I don't know what, the, is there a connecting theme here? I, this is, it's just talking about books and culture and, and the humanities to you. So this is, this is episode eight. We've got two weeks left to go. We are also on our way to 10,000 subscribers, which is kind of extraordinary. I think we're at about 9860. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. A couple of weeks ago, I mounted a defense of the liberal arts. So if you are a, a supporter of the liberal arts or if you are a skeptic of the liberal arts, I invite you to watch that video over here and I will see you there. I'll talk to you soon.